Now, a controversial statue of a slave merchant may be moved by an East London museum following a public campaign. Well, the monument of Sir Robert Jeffrey, who made his wealth from enslaving people from Africa, is above the entrance of the museum of the home. But the museum say they'd like to move it to a less prominent location. Meanwhile, the Labour MP, Marsha de Cordova, criticised the name of a housing complex in South London because of the links to slavery. But what is the best way for London to deal with its difficult history surrounding the slave trade? Our London reporter Alice Porter is outside the Museum of the Home in Hoxton. A uh, very good morning to you, Alice. Hi there, good morning. Yes, I'm just outside the home and you might not be able to see me, but right in front of the museum is the statue of Sir Robert Jeffrey. And you may be wondering, how on earth did uh, a statue of him come to be here? Well, Sir Robert Jeffrey invested lots of money in the transatlantic slave trade. He part owned a slave ship and with many of the, the money that he uh, earned in that time, he put it back into some sort of charitable ventures. And in this case, he put the money into arms houses, which were sort of social housing of the day. And that's actually the museum behind me is, is the arms arms houses that were built with the money that he used. But of course, his legacy is very problematic. When the museum sort of reopened last year, there was a plaque giving some sort of contextualization to who he was and how he came to have his statue on the front of the museum. But there was, of course, particularly last year, a public outcry that we saw. We saw after the death of George Floyd, we saw lots of discussions about monuments, street names, statues, and discussions about where, where they should be in our history and what place they serve, having them with such pro prominence. And I think this is the particular issue with this statue. It's right above the front of the museum. And many people are saying that the prominence of it is so popular. The museum are saying they want to move it, not completely remove it, they want to move it to a less prominent site. They want to have it still on the museum and they want to provide a bit more sort of historical sort of reference about who he was and what he, his contribution to the slave trade. But it's going to be quite a challenge for them because it is Grade 1 listed and the government bought in legislation last year, which means that museums have to get consent or permission if they want to move any, anything from a sort of historical monument. So there's a, a challenge ahead of them. Now, I want to bring in now uh, Daryl Blake, who uh, teaches Black British history and is a sort of social activist as well. Mm -hmm. um, thank you very much for joining me. Um, tell me. Tell me a little bit about Sir Robert Jeffrey and why his legacy here in the sort of Hoxton area is so problematic. Um, well, first of all, we have to realise that this man profited of one of the most traumatic experiences in human history. Um, yeah, he did pump a lot into this community, into the Hoxton area, but he was mainly behind the East India Company and the Royal African Company. And when you look at the Royal African Company, this was like the powerhouse behind the transatlantic slave trade. I mean, they trafficked more Africans than any other organization in the entire history of the transatlantic slave trade. Might I add to that is um, King Charles II and King James II and the Seventh of Scotland were literally behind funding and supporting people like Robert Jeffrey into the transatlantic slave trade. And what we don't realize is that this is a recent sort of like phenomenon understanding who this man is. Had we known about this man before, had we known about this man through national curriculum, we wouldn't be having this conversation today. So I think the highlight behind Robert Jeffrey is about him being glorified as you enter into the museum, is it to say, hi, we're honoring him, please come in and welcome yourself to this building which was financed by Jeffrey, which is entirely, entirely wrong in my opinion. And of course, it, this is a very, very difficult issue, whether we have statues up, whether they should be put, pulled down or not. I mean, we were speaking before we sort of came on air and we were sort of saying, you've sort of changed your tune on this. You know, initially you were very keen for them all, all to be sort of pulled down. Now you feel slightly different about it. Tell me why you've slightly changed your opinion on it. OK, so um, through my research um, and when I find out about, you know, especially London anyway, um, how they've honoured and glorified people who participate in the transatlantic slave trade, my inner feeling and my inner sort of approach to things was remove any sort of um, representation or residue of the transatlantic slave trade. But then, uh, through working with young people and working with children, I realised that me doing so or us doing so as, as a nation, if we remove the statues, um, then it's sort of been wiped out. And then Britain can sort of move on and be like, hey, it didn't happen because where's the evidence? So as much as a part of me, I'm 50% removed, but the other part is we should keep 
some statues or some uh, um, uh, monuments and you know landmarks but have the real information and the key thing is about what sort of context are you going to be put in there because we know throughout history um, that you know the truth is not always told and a lot of the stories that we hear about are pretty much whitewashed so if they do remove this statue and bring it to a, another part of the building or another part of the site um, what are they actually going to say so I think they need to work with local communities local organizations um, people who are you know advocates for telling black history or African history essentially and make sure that the right stories are being told now, now, what you sort of propose there about making sure that it's not a question of pulling anything down, it's a question of um, putting in a less prominent position and giving some sort of contextualisation and some history. Yeah. I think sort of most people sort of watching would say, well, I think that, that seems quite sensible. I suppose the, the concern that some people will have is that what we saw in Bristol last year with the Edward Colston statue being sort of pulled down and sort of thrown in the water, I think some people were kind of shocked by, by aspects of that. Now, it is important to stress that didn't come out of the blue. There was a huge amount of work that was done in Bristol with many people voicing opposition to it. So it may have appeared out the blue to many people, that's not what happened. However, I think there is something people find quite aggressive about statues being sort of pulled down. Can you understand perhaps people's concerns, I guess, around statues being removed or not, particularly given what we saw last summer? Yeah, um, I can understand people's rage, and that's because um, people who were raised, they love English history. And they feel like if a part of their history is being erased, then a part of themselves is being erased. But what they want to do is keep the statues up and say, you know, it's a part of history, it didn't happen in our time, let's move on. But they don't really understand that those people who participated in such, you know, atrocious behaviours um, affected lives of many people across the African diaspora. And seeing statues and monuments of these individuals um, can actually trigger certain feelings among certain people. Um, so pulling down statues was a, a reaction to something that happened last year, which is the death of George Floyd. And it's an irrational anger to something, but, you know, it, it's, it's a standard feeling. And I think it was how we should actually look at that is it was a, a global um, um, feeling um, and harmony feeling of, do you know what, the action needs to happen. And with something like um, pulling down a statue, it's, it's, it's a statue. It's not, we're not removing an individual from a uh, position of power. It's not human, it's an actual thing. And uh, what that actually does is bring out another conversation, which is, okay, how can we address history in the right place and in the right time? And, and thinking about conversations, Daryl runs walking tours around London looking at black British history. Since last summer, how much more sort of interest have you seen and how much more discussion are we all seeing, difficult discussions, about London's, particularly London's legacy when it comes to the slave trade? Um, I've seen a lot of um, attention, but it, it took for a black man to die in order for people to be like, hi. So there's sort of like a guilt feeling. I do love the attention because then I can have conversations with people. But it took for someone to die or, you know, for a video to be out of a man having a knee on his neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds for people to be like, oh, I feel guilty and I feel sad. And um, I, I feel like part of it is to do with actually I want to learn more. But I do feel like some of the attention is performative, you know, just tick boxing um, um, to say that, hey, do you know what? Let's, let's have this conversation. But it's, it's for the moment just to seem like. I'm doing something to kind of support organisation or to support Black Lives Matter. Um, so I guess we should capitalise off the attention at the moment, but more in-depth conversations to happen in schools, um, in the work environment and with the um, NHS as well. Daryl, thank you so much for your um, expertise this morning. We're actually we're, we're here this morning because of the uh, discussion that's taking place about the statue here, but we're actually going to be moving to Battersea now and looking at another a housing complex that's got a name that a lot of people find uh, very difficult because of its connotations with the slave trade, and that's Plantation Wharf. So we're going to be heading there now as we sort of have a bit of a sort of tour looking at sort of London's history that has been very much in the sort of news over the last week or so in many different ways because, it's, of course, these are difficult conversations that have been happening, particularly because of last summer as very much sort of London is trying to reconcile with a very difficult past for many people.